most farmers and operators never have the chance to drive a two to three hundred horsepower tractor. But these powerful workhorses are among the most fascinating machines in the farm machinery world. What is so impressive about these heavyweights are their size, power and high outputs. These modern tractors also feature some sophisticated electronic systems and controls. Equipped with high-performance engines, new transmission systems and intelligent electronic equipment, they show today what normal tractors will look like in five to ten years' time. This is why we have taken a close look at four high-power tractors, all fitted with engines that produce more than 200 horsepower. We inspected one model each from Case, Fent, John Deere and New Holland, which sells the tractor both as Fiat and Ford. All the tractors were thoroughly tested both on the test bench and in the field. This video compares the four tractors and shows you their differences. We reveal the machine's strengths and weaknesses, points usually only discovered after hours of practical work. And in response to the demand from our readers, we'll take you behind the scenes at the DLG test station to show you where our tractor tests are carried out. After all, the quality of the test itself determines the quality of the test results and how relevant these are to you. An important part of our tractor tests is carried out at the DLG test station near Frankfurt. All OECD tractor tests in Germany are carried out here. It is equipped with reliable and sophisticated measuring technology. Profi International draws on the experience and expertise of these engineers who have carried out more than 100 tractor tests in the past seven years. DLG stands for German Agricultural Society. Together with the DLG engineers, we constantly update and extend our test program. The data we compile is the basis of our unbiased comparisons. At the DLG, the tractor's lifting capacities, hydraulics, traction, noise level and pedal forces are measured for the magazine. And of course, the best test of the tractor's performance is still PTO output combined with fuel consumption. Profi's editors and engineers will be your guides on this video. Here, they are showing you the heart of a tractor test, the tractor's engine, in this case, the engine in the New Holland Fiat G210. PTO output is measured with an engine brake. Like 20 years ago, this still is a fluid friction dynamometer, which uses water for cooling. To ensure we get accurate results, this brake is calibrated every six months. The PTO starts off at idling speed, with load increasing slowly until it peaks at rated engine speed when fuel injection is highest. Until a few years ago, the output at rated speed was also the maximum output. But, more recently, constant power and extra power have been introduced to describe the engine characteristics. Now, maximum output may be at 200 to 400 RPM below rated speed, and this is what we call extra power. It can increase as the engine speed drops. Manfred Lober is head of tractor technology at the DLG test station. We asked about developments in engine performance. What kind of criteria are applied today to assess an engine? An erste Stelle natürlich ob die the first point is whether maximum output at tested speed matches the results expected and if the recorded maximum speed reflects correct tuning. We then evaluate the output characteristics. First the torque to see whether it increases and how fast. And then we check if constant power is maintained over a wide speed range. Also, whether the tractor's extra power remains through this constant power range. Here at the DLG test station, a tractor's performance is measured on the PTO and not on the engine. So I'm sure you will want to know what is the difference between PTO output, which you publish in the tests, and engine output. 
Generally speaking, the difference lies in the tractor's specifications. This basically means how many extra facilities it offers. More operator convenience and options often means more power is lost between the flywheel and the final exit at the PTO shaft. There are at least two, often four gears between the PTO and flywheel, even more if its speed can be changed by a lever. These all mean power is lost because of the friction created by the gears, bearings and seals. Power is also absorbed by the oil pump that works constantly, causing the oil to heat up. If the tractor has air conditioning, the compressor will absorb some engine power, even if it is not switched on. The same applies to any other ancillary that is powered by the engine. Basically, any extra operator aid or comfort that needs power takes away from the PTO power. Now let's have a look at our measurements. We measure the output as it emerges on the PTO. And we attach great importance to constant power. In this respect, the new Holland engine on the Fiat and Ford tractors delivered the best results. Constant power is directly related to extra power, which was highest on the G210. Measuring the specific fuel consumption, which is consumption at maximum load and at rated speed, we found that Fent and New Holland were the most economical tractors. Best results for maximum torque and torque rise were, not surprisingly, achieved by the New Holland engine. While John Deere produced by far the best result in start-off torque. Let's have a look at this tractor working in the field. <laughs> 